Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I will be talking about and showing my favorite websites to use for Cricut projects. Uh, one of them is an app, the rest are websites and it's free. I'm gonna start with like, I wouldn't say my least favorite because I like them all, but I'm gonna start with that and watch it towards the end to see what is my favorite most useful one. I do have all the links of the websites posted below so you could click on them and check them out. So I'm gonna go down the list and I'm gonna kind of show you how to use them. All right, let's begin. So the first website I like to use is called designbundles.net. It has free items, but then it also has stuff you could pay for. And the prices are pretty like decent and it's all kinds of like cool stuff as you can see i'm just scrolling through it and when you go right here i'm gonna zoom in when you go right here it has free designs and then it has one dollar deals but anyway so you go over free designs and you could like on this left side you could see like graphics tools templates photos crafters and etc and you just basically see what they are right here and it's all free like i mean look how cool this stuff is um i did a video on this one i'll link it below in the description anyway so it's really cool and the only thing is that for you to use this i think you do have to sign in you don't have to buy anything you don't have to pay for anything just sign up with your email and uh that's how you get free stuff and then the cool thing is that on your email yeah uh, every friday there's a you know, get an email and it has like a friday freebie and you have like a free bundle of something that's usually not in this free items so this is a christmas one see how it has svg png dx xf and eps files so i'm gonna download it and then i'm just scroll down over here download free now and this thing pops up but i just ignore it whatever and then i'm using my mac so this is where it's gonna be at here it is i'm gonna open it okay so if i go on my Krika and i click upload upload image and then i go over here and i'm just gonna get this merry christmas one and i drag it and as you can see there's no more background you don't have to do anything you just click this last one complex continue and right here you could preview it and this is what you have and it has a name already you don't have to do anything and you save it that is all super easy and this is a a png file see right here dot svg so i'm gonna go ahead and do the same one but with the svg and this is what pops up you don't have to edit nothing that's it and you just save it and I'm going to show you the difference between these two. This is why I love designbundles.net. Because if I were to get a Google image, let's say, and I found an image with no background, this is what most Google images would be. With If you can find it with no background or it has a background and you have to delete it, this is what it would be. Now, what I like about design bundles is that they give you this option, but then they give you this option. And I'm going to show you what that means. All the letters are separated. Watch, I'm going to hide them. And I'm just going to show you what that means with like little images right here. Watch, I'm just going to do this farm fresh one. Save. So this SVG files. And let's see, I loved everything, but I didn't want the trees. So as you could see, there it is. Or... You know how when you cut this out, everything's going to cut out on one, let's see, vinyl or iron on, and it'll be all one color. But you want the trees to be separated and be cut a different color, vinyl. So you just click on over here, click on the right on the image itself, and that is out. And this is like super separated. Usually it's like separated by words, but click the top one and hold down shift key up to here. This is... So all of this from there all the way down could weld it and then they become the separate image and it's all together. The design bundles.net it has all of these, all the stuff that you can get, you buy or get them for free. They all have regular PNG files, but it also has SVG files, which is totally awesome. 
the other website, I think, um, I think it's the same company. I'm not sure, but it's called Fun Font Bundles on there. And right here, again, it's the same thing as design bundles on there, but it's for fonts. And you can have free fonts and such. And it's done. So I'm going to open it. And I'm going to click on this. Install font. And that's it. So once I install that, you do have to close your Cricut and you have to open it again because it like restarts it or else it won't show that the new font was downloaded. Sorry, I sound funny. I'm a little congested. And what is that font called? It's called Kadish. So you go in here, you could search it or go on system fonts and you search it and there it is. Look how cute it is. I mean, it's free. It's awesome. That's why I love those websites. Another website I love, it's called 1001fonts.com. What I like about this website is that I did a video on how to write with Cricut and stuff. And you know how you have to use really thin fonts? So it's kind of cool because when you click on font categories, right here, you could pick I love this. And then again, you just download them and then it's the same thing as it did with the font. I do like this, this one and also DAW font. I like these two websites more than font bundles in that because it has way more options. I mean, you have like images and stuff. Like I already have something like that. I'll watch. Like you see right here, butterfly. These are fonts that I got from either DAW font or 1001 font I forgot which exactly one I think my favorite is see like these diamonds I just type in a b c whatever you know and it just shows me all kinds and this is a diamond font it's just called diamonds so you could just search it right here this is the one I have you know and you cut it you could even print it another web it's called online dot rapid resizer I have the link at the bottom anyways what I use this one for is I'm going to search, like, flower. Let's see. So, with this thing, it's, like, sometimes it kind of works, and then it kind of doesn't. But you know how this is, like, really blurry? and. But I want to kind of show you what's the difference between doing that and not doing that. And I usually do this for, like, really bad pixelated images or whatever, like, blurry ones. So, this is the original one that I got on on Google. And I'm just going to clear all the stuff. If I were to cut it out, like, look how bad. This is, if you were to use vinyl to cut this out, this is what it would look like. And it just looks really bad. And even when I click simple, let's see what it does when I choose the simple setting. It's a little better, but... I mean, still, it just looks bad. Now the one that I just used the website for. So you could do whichever one. It works the same. And it's perfect lines. Again, like, as you can see right here, it's missing. This is going to go on to the next. It's not a website. It is an application. And I know that Windows have it has it, too. It's a little different, but it's called Paint. And the one on Mac that I have, I have Paint S. So I'm going to open the image that I did on this Rapid Resizer. I don't know why it's called Resizer when it uh, vectorizes your image instead. When I open it, what I like to do, I would zoom in. And then I see this little curve line. So I just kind of go around. And I basically fix up the image. I used to do this only when, for like, if I wanted something to be super perfect. I mean, there's just so much stuff you could do with this. So if you just mess around and stuff, you could fix it up or make it like your own thing. And the cool thing is that with this paint, also this little fill, but if you use this fill, you could also remove the background already if you wanted to. You could save it as the original paint document, which will save all of these on the left, all your editing. And I usually like to save that uh, just in case I want to re-edit. And then on top of that, I'll save it as PNG, which it will save it without the background or JPEG. And there it is. It already has no background and stuff. And the lines, 
are super clean. Yeah, and there's a lot more things you could do with paint. Like, there's just so much. You could use all of your fonts that you downloaded. Now that Cricut has this curve button, they used to not have this curve thing. But now that they do, it's kind of nice because you could use it and all. But before they had this, I used to use it in paint. Like, you just draw a circle and... And then it tells you input your text here. You just write whatever you want. And it shows you like how it goes. And then you could hide this or delete the circle. Um, another cool thing that Cricut does not do is like you put in a curved line, let's say. And you want the text to go like this. And then you add curved text. And I'm going to put... And then after that, you could just delete that. And this thing, you could edit it whichever way you want it to go. And then you can save this and upload that to your Cricut. Paint, um, it just has so much things you could do with it. I want to do a separate video about that. And another website is cool. It's obviously Etsy.com. You could go on it and, I mean, like right here, 669 images. And make sure you get the SVG ones, not like PDF, because those you have to work with too much, whatever. But look how many cute images and stuff, and it's only $5.99. There's just so much on Etsy. There's so much. All right, so the app is called Magic Eraser, and every time I open the app, this thing pops up, but I don't want to pay for the app, so I just click that little X button, and there's always like a five-second add and just close it and then get your picture and then you could like crop it over here i'm gonna leave it as is and then right here my the magic one it's already selected it's the orange one when you click on the stuff it erase and so right now it's erasing like all the white parts that i'm selecting after i'm done with this i'm gonna save it and then i'm gonna show you the difference between uploading this image to krika and the original image to krika and how it looks like and then to save it, you just, uh, so over here on the, on the left, the JPEG, when you click on it, I just save everything in high resolution, but the JPEG has a white background. And then the PNG has no background. And then you can click done, and then it goes back to the photo. If you want to do, um, another photo, you just go back, and it's going to ask you to start over, and you just click yes, and you can pick another photo. So here's when I upload the one I edited with the white background. You could erase the background. Or you could upload the one with the already transparent background, so you don't have to do that. But anyways, as you can see, it's all smooth cut lines. Okay, and now I'm going to go grab the original image that I took off of my sister's Instagram. And, and because it's a drawn picture and then she took a photo of it on her phone to upload it, it's not like computerized. So as you could see, when I delete the background and preview the image there's little tiny dots everywhere and the lines are not all straight that is super bad for your cricut like you it'll just uh <clears throat> waste needles more and then again it's like not a clean cut so that is the difference between uploading the image regular image to your cricut versus using the app Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do. And if you like this video, it gives it a thumbs up. It will help me out a lot. Also, don't forget to check out my website, www.jonastar.com, where I sell my handmade items and where I make the cutest little head wraps and little turbans and sizes from newborn to adult also cutest little bow headbands and a big bow and a small bow so check it out and if you have any questions comment below i'll try to get to all of them i usually do thank you bye